back for episode three. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> we've been we've recorded this like th- th- three times. And I think it's just us um, <laughs> speaking about that and being honest with it goes to tell you that we are not perfect, not ever no. will be perfect, nor are ever trying to be perfect. And that's something as a recovering perfectionist, I have to work on because I like things in a very specific way yes. and it has to be quote unquote perfect in my mind yes, or do. I do not want to partake in it. Right. If I am not in control, in the lead, in, you know, making sure everything is like up to code in my head, right? I will walk away from it. And I've been like that in my entire life. It's something I really do. How are you working work on, on that? How are you working on that? How are you how are you recovering? I think it's always remembering I gotta let go and let God, you know, because or let go and let Roman. Let go and let Roman. <laughs> and then you can blame <laughs> it on I, me if it goes wrong. <laughs> honestly, really though, because I just take so much responsibility over my life that I have to make sure everything goes the way I want it to go in my head. But it's life and it never goes out that way. So I'm always living in a state of constant frustration because things are not going out the way I expected it to in my head. Right. And it's kind of like like uh, I'm seeing how I want it to go in my head right now, even as I'm speaking it, how I wanted this podcast to start and flow and go and and exactly what I want you to say. And I'm like, I really am like tempted to want to have writ, 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 la, 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 to write out a script. <laughs> See, so this is you, tearing her up right now. <laughs> I know. It's like eating me on the inside. So, But it's kind of like the movie that we just watched, Turning Red. Oh, that right? was such a good movie. It's kind of like really Turning Red. I really do recommend it. Look, I really it, do. Look, it's hidden hard. I She's cried. thinking about it. She cried. I was so good. What Soul was for me, I think Turning Red was for her. Soul was a really good movie, too. We actually... Fun fact, we watched that movie 10 different times and cried. Right. And I think it was because that movie specifically, Soul, anyways, was almost like a reminder for, y- for, for myself. As much as these animated movies are kids' movies, it's I think not. they're also, they also say I a love, lot to adults. They do. And it's because I think that specific movie, why it hit us so hard and why we kept crying is because it had to remind us to stop living your life for that next thing that you're aiming for. Mm. And I think that's how I've always lived my life as someone, yeah. again, who is Even a perfectionist, mm-hmm. who um, is very goal oriented. Right. And when you're, you when know, you're a winner and you're a go getter and you like, like to achieve stuff in life and you've that's always all done you focus well. on and yep. you, you say to yourself and like the character in soul was saying to himself, my life is going to change. Everything is going to be different Everything's gonna change. when I am, you know, so and so fill in the blank. Yeah. And I think that's how. Yeah. Like I said, I was living my life. And then when he got to when he ended up actually losing his life. Mm. Was when he was able to remember how important his life, is. how important his life is. I never even looked at it that way. Yeah. He had to lose it. And sometimes that's how it is. And to I think some. It. Yeah. Ooh. And I. Yeah. You because it's like you it were blessed it. with everything. And I think like when he started looking around him and he heard like the children laughing and he saw the wind and the leaves blowing when the he just walked outside, the, the sun shining on his face and like him able to take a breath of fresh air, eating pizza, eating, tasting the taste of pizza and yep. all of those little things we take for we granted. take for granted because we're just too focused on what we want to happen. Right. So anyway, so you're so locked in in in. And focused yeah. on this, whatever this this achievement or this title or whatever you're chasing right now, you forget to just pay attention to what is actually happening and being in that moment. And it's kind of like what we were talking about literally like maybe an hour ago on the balcony. Yeah. It's just like, what is life but moments? Which is true. And right? I think that, again, when God gave us this life, right, he didn't create it i believe for us to live in this state of lack Mm -hmm. like he gave us everything when we came onto earth you know that right like we were already given everything we needed and and plus more and then some and then some and it wasn't until that we just got greedy Mm -hmm. that i think is when we started to realize that we stopped being appreciative of everything that we had around us i think especially as americans 
I think Americans, we have that. That's like a big problem for Americans. It is. Is that we live in the land of milk and honey, man. Like, this is the land that I feel like God was talking about. <laughs> this is the promised land. Like, name another country on this planet that even just holds a candle to what America's got. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we are booming over here. Anything you want, mm -hmm. literally within minutes. At the snap of your fingers, you can order, you can get a ride, go somewhere. You can order food. It could be at your front doorstep right away. Yeah, you can take if you don't have money, like you can get grants and loans. And like loans. In somebody a day. will somebody you can go will to those payday loan, loan centers and just ask for a couple hundred bucks, and they'll give it to you. And which you is, can flip it. Yeah, which is so <laughs> insane. It's so you're right. We are blessed, immeasurably. Almost too blessed. Mm -hmm. And I think then the idea of greed is what takes us away mm, from this right. state of blessed. Ness. Seven deadly sins. That's even a word. Blessedness. Blessedness. The state, yeah. The state of Hased. being blessed. I said, right? Mm -hmm. That 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 blessing or that love that Makarios. Just like, Makarios. Makarios. Yeah. That Greek that, word. That Greek word for it's just like a whole different level of love. It's like and blessing that's like totally the state undeserved. of being favored by God. Yeah. Which, undeservedly favored by God. Which we are. And I think when we start to take almost too much control over our life, thinking that if we were to take 100% control, we can then reach a state of ultimate like blessings, right. ultimate um, success in our mind, whatever that may look mm. like for whoever or whatever. We just think we can get from where we are now to way up here uh -huh. if we take a complete control. But I think that we forget that we already are superiorly blessed and favored already more than what we as mere humans could do and so when i say that i needed to learn to let go mm -hmm. and to let god that's what i mean that instead of me trying to make everything so perfect right. for it to fit so perfectly your, your for it ideals to, instead of his ideals his which are always better Right. My way of going about things versus God's way of going about things will always lead to more abundance versus me trying to think if I do it this way, I will get the results right. I'm looking for. And he's been around since the beginning of everything, the yeah. alpha, the omega. So he has way more experience than you do. But look, where I'm like, well, I'm 27. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of, that just reminded me thinking because of your age. I know you were mentioning it more of like, well, I've had this experience, quote unquote, but mm -hmm. I was thinking it more of like, well, I'm 27, I should be here. Or I, um, I think I'm talking about like comparison. Right. When with greed, I think it's like one of it is, yes, maybe built by like self desires, uh -huh. but I think another it is built more by envy because I think a lot of greed is fueled. Mm by the coveting, jealousy, the coveting of another envy, person's coveting, yeah. comparing yourself to yeah. what this person this has doing and this at, person is doing. Right. At a similar stage yes. in life as you. Yes. Right. Like, well, he's 30 and he's already a millionaire. And so what? You know, Moses was 70. Jesus was, didn't start his ministry until, until he, he was, was 30. 30. Exactly. And his ministry was only what? It was like eight, nine or 10 years or something like that. Yeah. It was something brief. Brief. Super mm -hmm. brief. And you know what? I, I was just, I, I I think it was Eric Thomas, but he was just like, what do you think Jesus was doing for them 30 years? For the first 30 for years? For the first 30, mm. you know, before he started started preaching and stuff, yeah. and learning and listening. Yeah. If God can submit himself, come down on earth as a baby, y'all, mm -hmm. and grow up, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As a baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With Filled with all of the earthly temptations yep, yep. and all desires. And, and if he can that, come down yeah. and submit himself and learn and listen for 30 years, like, bro, we could do that, too. Exactly. You and I, I mean? think when again, when you try to take so much control of it, you are just looking at all of these other people thinking if I can just stop what I'm doing and do what they're doing and copy them and again, take control and try to take control. Right. Then I'll have what they have or even better. And I think that. God, we forget that God's promise to us was that he has a plan for us. Mm -hmm. And well, you he, were, you're promised, you're promised family. Yes. You're promised land and mm -hmm. you're promised blessing. Yeah. That, that was, favor that's initial, by God. that initial covenant. Right. That is what you are promised. You are promised that mm -hmm. you will get that. 
you will you will expand your your family you will expand yourself your family name you will have ownership over things you will have land you will have something to call your own mm-hmm. and you will have his blessing that is his promise for you that wow. is the ark of the covenant that's on the ark of the covenant which was so holy it mm-hmm. was so holy back then yeah. that in that spot you had to be the be like you had to be a top notch gent like mm-hmm. if you were just any a little bit evil mm-hmm. dead on sight wow. just 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 being in the area of the holy place like they would just like fall and die yep. on sight wow just being in the like area. no one was there like killing them just in the area of the holy place wow if you weren't the right type of person in there so only certain specific people and this is like obviously mm-hmm. in ancient Israel and stuff like that in the yeah. tabernacle which was the first mobile church Mm-hmm. They would literally pick it up and go because, you mm-hmm. know, Israel was a was a nation that was just on the move mm-hmm. and there was a holy place. And that's where God was. So this is a time where God was with the people. Mm-hmm. Like, such a crazy time. God was with the people like he was there. Like imagine being in a time period where like God's just there and you're just like, what's up, God? And he's like, how you doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, He did speak. You could Often. audibly hear mm-hmm. him, not in your head. Right. Hear him. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, but it was just, it's just so crazy how that, how that, how that whole thing works. And then we were lit in church, how, you know, the Bible verse says that you can, you can only see him behind the rock. Right. Mm-hmm. And the rock is obviously a metaphor for Jesus. And in order to get through God and all of his holiness, we have to go through Jesus. But there was a time period where God didn't speak to anybody like how it is right now. Yeah. You when he was I mean? silent. Mm-hmm. It was silent. It was the quiet, it was the quiet, quiet period. Mm -hmm. which was 400 years, Mm -hmm. and then Jesus showed up. And remember how we were talking before that you mentioned the rock is actually what people should be wearing around their necks, not the cross, because the Mm. rock really does represent Jesus. I forgot about that. Like that was him when he moved the rock, the rock opened, Mm -hmm. right? And he Mm -hmm. was alive. It shouldn't be the, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to ask God when I see him. Yeah. Like there why, are some things. Like, why the cross, God? Why the cross? There are some things that I think, and I think that it's something you have to be okay with, too, that you will never have the answers to everything. Right. And I don't think we need to know the answers to everything. Right. We don't have to have the answers. I think that God will supply us with what we need to know when we need to know it. And right. he will always be the light that lamps you know, for our feet to walk and, yep. and that's it. And I think again, if we keep trying to almost be kind of like, you know, the story of Satan where he thought he could be greater than God and mm-hmm. he can fly higher than God and he could know everything that God did. Right. I think when we again, go back to that thing of comparison, it will then lead to greed right? and you will then go down a very dark, twisted path. Which you don't want to do. Which you, you don't want to do because position. you will never get that abundance that you're searching for. You're going to end up getting total feeling of lack. Right. And it's like, like a, hatred um, in your heart. It's like you that know? thing that, that people always say, like, when you have lack of discipline in a certain area, you kind of have to do the opposite in order to, like, tighten that area up. Right? Like, what do you mean? So, like, if you are undisciplined in the way that you eat, then you need to get disciplined on the way that you eat right it's kind of like it's kind of like counterintuitive right i can't remember how it goes but it's just like if you um oh no if you are undisciplined in in the way that you eat you become a slave to food right Mm -hmm. if you are undisciplined in the way that you spend money you become a slave to money Mm -hmm. right and the areas that you you're just willy-nilly in yolo you actually become bound by it yeah, I think you talked about this in right. either the last episode or the first one, where if you aren't disciplined with your thoughts, then you become yeah. a slave to You'll them. You become enslaved to it. And I think it's the mm-hmm. same thing, you know. If you aren't disciplined with your ambition, that's when greed can creep in and you become a slave to your ambition. Very you true. You become a slave to, to the, your goals and your dreams and mm-hmm. the things that you want to do and you forget to keep your eyes on Jesus and you keep your eyes on your dream. Mm. keep your dream in front of you they say right mm-hmm. you know you got to be obsessed with it mm-hmm. right 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 and 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 for me obsession leads to idolism 
It does. Obsession leads to idolatry, right? And it which does. is which is dangerous. And you start idolizing the wrong thing. Because ultimately that dream, it could it could come from a great place in your heart, but I think it'll then turn to, yeah, you idolizing money and, you start and receiving an abundance in your of money. Life and stuff yeah, like that. And you and, lose your integrity. Yep. I was just listening to another podcast by Emma Chamberlain. Oh yeah. I mm-hmm. actually really like listening to her she's she's fire quite entertaining i like her and she has a lot of great points but anyways regardless <laughs> she was talking about integrity and she said like it makes no freaking sense why someone who does work hard and is doing their best and then there's this other person she was talking about a documentary about a million dollar company where the ceo makes a ton of money but like treats their employees terribly and it's like just a terrible person and it's just like why is this person so successful? And it's like, at the end of the day, is it even worth it if you're going to mm. lose all of that integrity that you had mm. in the beginning, all of that character, right. because you started, again, idolizing the money? Right. And I think that's why some people can kind of give those people who are millionaires, successful, ambitious, why they get a, a bad rap sometimes. And I think that's why sometimes people don't want to go down that journey yeah. Uh, because they they don't want to lose themselves. They're afraid of losing themselves. Mm-hmm. So they almost end up creating almost a hatred towards success, mm. which is kind of crazy. Um, and I'm not saying we're or not a saying hatred that. towards successful, successful people, people or, you know, people who make a lot of money, who make really. a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And they like, well, you know, I bet he's stealing that. You know what I mean? And yeah, I remember like, hearing a quote one time where someone was like, oh, that person was really nice for a rich person. And it's like automatically we just assume that if you're, if you make a lot of money that you're you mean screwed somebody over and you screwed there. somebody over yep. or you treat, you know, people badly, you know, a lot of the times there's like the, a lot right. of those videos where it's like the rich person is like cussing out the Starbucks barista and right. you know what I mean? And we got to change the narrative, bro. We do. We got to get more Christians rich, bro. We got to get more Christians. Yes, rich, that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, we got to take the money out of the bad dude's hands, the evil person's <laughs> hands, and we got to put it in, some, in, the, in, the, in the hands yeah. of a Christian. Yes, uh, where of, they of can. The person that, that got God mm-hmm. in their heart. So exactly. that they can do something amazing with it. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I think a lot of the times, too, a lot of those people who, again, treat a lot of people badly, maybe they do have faith, maybe they don't, but I think they just get too much into that sense of control like I was talking about before of like I did everything it's me I'm the greatest person alive you know and I think that can get to a very dangerous and a very scary place that you know you're just one going to be mean to people but I think too I think that really just totally like messes up your mind yeah and you just become so egotistical you get get diluted so yeah very diluted diluted Mm -hmm. and clouded and Mm -hmm. you forget what you even started the business for you you forget what you even what you're even on the path for yeah i think that was us yeah for a little bit when we were in business yeah you know um and you and you you get so desperate you get so desperate to to want to succeed succeed. yep you're trying to like Mm -hmm. let god go away and like you take over right you know i got this yeah. You know that quote like because oh, it's not going at the pace that you that want you it to. Want it to. Right. Which and is something understand. I understand. It's yeah. not in your plan. Mm-hmm. It's in his plan. Mm-hmm. It's not in your plan. It's in his plan. Right. You know, E.T. has this this quote. It takes 21 years to become 21 years old. It's true. Right. It's, and it's true. And like that's like, well, duh. But like, <laughs> no, for real. It takes 21 years to become mm-hmm. 21 years old. It takes mm-hmm. 21 years to become an adult, you know what I mean? To hit that age, it's going to take time. You got to trust the process. Don't rush the process. And you have to remember that your journey is your journey and God is creating your testimony for you to be a testimony of who he is and what he can do. And if he were to give every single person the same exact story, well, one, what a boring place it would be to live on this earth. And then two, it's just like, how could we ever talk about the glory and wonders of God? If there's no miracles, if there are no miracles, if he and can't if, take someone, you know, like you who was right. homeless, sleeping in, you know, in the front well, corner friends, of a friends, friends floors, apart, heart floors, um, cruising around. Yeah. If we were putting five dollars in our remember that when we put five dollars oh, in a man. Ford Fiesta for gas, right because now, we could, 
We wouldn't be oh able gosh. to do nothing. No, <laughs> Literally. Right now, I we'd was, be on a foot. I just was thinking that the other day when I drove by the gas station, I said, $5. I said, wow, we only ever used to put $5, so we would have just a yep. gallon of gas and, and just good in luck. Ford like, Fiesta in Reno, <laughs> man, dude, that $5 would give us 70 miles. It would. We'd be cruising, baby. Oh, 70 miles in Reno. That's great. It's such a small that's town. Wonderful. You Here in Vegas, you now, could never that get would, anywhere. That would get us like 40. That would get us 30 miles. We wouldn't even be able to survive it. No, nope, we would um, drive out of our parking lot and say, oh, oh God, turn back gas. around. Yeah, it's got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. And mm-hmm. I think that's why it's so important to remember where you came from. Yeah. Especially when you, especially growing up in America and then also immigrating into America. You got to you got to remember where you came from. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people, they come here, they start making money and they forget who they were in the beginning and, where, and, and, the, and, and how they came up. And then they think they're a certain way and they need to be a certain way because society is a certain way. Like, Again, no, that comparison. you got to remember mm-hmm. who you are and mm-hmm. where you came from. Dog, you were sleeping on floors. You were sleeping on dirty mattresses. No sheets. It was just you and your dog in the middle of winter. And you guys yep. were curled up. I, I remember, too, you me I mean? and a friend of mine, we were sleeping on a mattress that had no sheets on it and a friend's apartment living room floor we were living out of our suitcases I remember we were so hungry that one time I was walking across the street she worked at a bakery for like a week and she would bring home like the bread that would technically be spoiled but they they would let you keep it and I remember we were we had to walk to work which was a 40 minute walk because we couldn't afford a car we couldn't even afford a bus fare which is so sad because a bus is like I don't even know but were, were we not the happiest then yeah very joyous right not clouded were we not mm-hmm. the happiest then and that's why it's so important to remember where you came from because i yeah. think sometimes you can just get twisted and you can start again like you were saying act a different way because you think now because you have a little bit more money in your bank account that right. you can act i don't know i don't even know more entitled or act mm-hmm. more egotistical or act right. like a quote-unquote rich person like i was talking right. about that person before so and it was a, a random thought that I had a, in church mm-hmm. that it's just like, once you get a taste of the real thing, the fake stuff will never, it'll never survive, suffice, right? I think you are your realist when you're, when you're going through those times. And then when you start getting a little bit of money, you start coming up, life gets a little bit easier. I think it's mm-hmm. easy to, cre- to create a facade. Mm-hmm. You can create a mask. Yeah. You create a mask for yourself. For the mm-hmm. people and for public. It's like Halloween. You know, which mask am I going to put on today? And you start being different people. And I think that just goes, too, with, like, constantly trying to please everyone because you think they won't ever accept you for who right. you are. So you feel like you need to change who you are. Which is sad because I know how that feels firsthand because mm-hmm. I still struggle with that. And I pray about it all the time that I will eventually overcome it. But I... You know, just, you know, you've seen how I am, like how I am with certain people. I will hold myself back because I don't want to be, I don't even know what the word is. I just, I don't know. I don't want them to think of me in any other way than how I want them to think of me, which is like, oh, she's great, you know? And like, that's it. But I think that also can just hold back a lot of like the true, vulnerable, real relationship that you need that you need and that you should have with the people around you because you keep trying to put on yeah like you're saying that facade that fake face and authenticity breeds connection where they're like oh it's lonely at the top and i'm like it don't have to be no it's not and it shouldn't be john maxwell says if you if you are alone once you get to the top you did something wrong Mm -hmm. you did something wrong Mm -hmm. if it's just you at the top and you brought no one with you you did something wrong yeah Right. A true or you leader. We're stepping on people, yep. treating people terribly, people. making people feel bad about themselves. Right. And a true leader. Never worth it. True leader brings people with them. Mm. A fake leader thinks that they're leading people, but they're really just on a stroll. <laughs> I Maxwell remember that says. quote. Yeah. <laughs> they're just on a stroll by themselves. They look back and there's no one. There's no one, no one there. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think it's so important, man, just to get your mind right. To get that your way. mind right and to remember that. You don't have to be in control of everything in your life. You do have to take responsibility for your life. That's a fact. Like I was talking about before, God gave us that free will in that last and last episode, last week's episode. But it's like what like what we learned about in church uh, a couple weeks ago. 
there's a portion of your life that you can control Mm -hmm. and then there's a big fat portion of it that you cannot control and you have to get good at recognizing and discerning which part of your life can do and what only god can do mm, yep Yep. 100 percent. the fact you just got to let go and let god (laughs) let go and let god and just know that like i was reading this bible verse the Uh other day for my assignment um and it's um I don't remember what this specific Bible Bible we're learning. We're, we're working on, on memorizing verses in, in class this week. So that'll be exciting for better. you because um, if you guys don't know this, well, you, obviously we maybe some of you who are they, friends with us, but Roman has a very I have a bad memory. short memory. Yeah. Let's just say that <laughs> he has just short memory. He can't, I have a bad memory. it just is it's not so in him to be able yeah. to remember things. I can't remember anything. No, no. Like, even my birthday. But then it's just When's random. my birthday? It's random. Do you know? May, See, look at him. I'm putting, okay, there we go. Good job. <laughs> gotcha. See, that's... 96. <laughs> oh, my God. 96. <laughs> no. 97? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, it's just... It's okay. Sorry. We're working I'm on sorry, it. We're y'all. improving. I'm sorry, We're getting y'all. better I'm going to get better. But I think... I got to take that ginkgo biloba, that memory builder. <laughs> Something. I got to get right, bro. God will give you... Well, he, but what's good, he can memory. remember things... Random like random stuff. stuff. Like I was talking about before how he's obsessed with history. He really does remember all of this stuff that happened in history, but like I can't remember certain things birthday. in his own <laughs> life. No, not even. I mean, obviously, yeah, like dates yeah. and stuff, but no, just certain memories from your own life. Didn't you say you, you always say like when I ask you about something in your childhood, you're like, I don't know. I don't remember anything past the age of 10, you know, <laughs> I don't remember anything past four years ago to be so honest, <laughs> <laughs> which honestly, I feel like it's like a blessing. And maybe a curse, whatever, if you want to look at it that way. But it's like, you never remember anything versus me. I remember everything. So I'm always thinking about sometimes I will lay in bed and um, off topic, but sometimes I will lay in bed and I will think of something that I did in fifth grade and I'll say, why didn't I just say this instead? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) If you would have just told this to her, like, I'm not even kidding. That happens to me probably every day. And, and it just tears you up. It just really tears me up. Like, you <laughs> see, it's fifth that, grade Lonnie. What are you doing? It's that perfectionist mindset. I will even try to look back on my past and say, I need to perfect it. I need to make this better. <laughs> wait, wait till they make that time machine. I'm about just, to Adam I'm, Project that thing. I'm about to Adam Project, baby. If you haven't Adam, seen Adam Project, it's a good one. I slept through like half of if it. If it's though. one thing that we love to do is to watch movies, it's a great way that we like to enjoy each mm-hmm. other's time and, and spend right. time with each other. So we watch a lot of them. But yeah, but uh, yeah, it was the Bible verse I was I was doing. I did an assignment for for my mm-hmm. class, and it it talks about how the disciples hopped on a boat with Jesus, and it was mm-hmm. a big massive storm, right? Um, and I think it's very reminiscent of what's going on right now in the world with COVID. I guess I guess that's over, but um. <laughs> Uh, no comment. The war, <laughs> no comment. The war in Ukraine, mm-hmm. right? And again, and gas prices going up. Things getting more expensive, and we're not. We don't know how we're going to make it. They're taking back all the money that they gave, the free money that they gave over the past two years on your tax returns, and it can feel like a storm, right? And yeah. then when you feel like it's over, you're just like, oh, actually, we're in the eye of the storm. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's very reminiscent of that story of how the di- disciples were on the ship, mm-hmm. and they were all freaking out and they were like where's jesus oh he's asleep mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and it's just like if the if the rock of all ages if the king of all kings is sleep during this then why are we so why worried? are you tripping why are you why trying are you to tripping? be so much in control you don't have to be you don't gotta be if uh-huh. that if i was one of the disciples knowing what i know now I'd probably hop up in bed right next to him, curl up right next to him. Just, you know what, Jesus, you know, you sleep, I'm sleep too. Just cuddle up. I'm out. I'm out. You sleep, I'm (laughs) sleep. And I think that's also a reminder of like the Bible verse Mm -hmm. that inspired this entire podcast. Well, the name of it. Right. Psalms 121 verses one through two, right? When we lift our eyes up to the mountain and we see something that we feel like we cannot overcome, we cannot climb. It's just too much. It's overwhelming. It's right. you just look at it. You're already tired, you know, or like, you're like, I don't even want to deal with this. I'm going to turn on TV and drown this out. Right. But when you look at that again, you have to remember your help doesn't come from yourself. And I think that as someone who struggles with asking for help, I have to remind myself that I do not have to know everything. Mm -hmm. I do not have to have all the answers and I do not need to act like I have all the answers or that I know what I'm doing and that I'm in control and I got this. And I think it's okay to show and to 
well, really, you, you just got to remember where your Jesus. help comes from. It comes Jesus. from the creator of this the earth. earth. He created the, the heaven. Winds. He created, he created this storm. all, and he can help you yep. through anything. Yep. So. You got to keep your eyes on him. He's the only one that can wake up out of his sleep, step out on that boat, and says, be calm. Which is telling because when we are going through life, do you remember that story, that famous story of like when I was going through a tough time and I looked down at the beach or something and I only saw like footprints, something like that. And, you know, I thought I was alone and, you know, God said, no, I was carrying you through it on the beach, something like that. There's a story like that, but basically I don't know the story. You don't know that <laughs> no. one. I, there, it's, that sounds said, good, though. it's said way more beautifully than I said it, but basically that <laughs> when you feel like you're alone and then you feel like you're, you, you can't do it. It's just when you look down or you look up, right? Look up, look up podcast. Anyways, shout out. You'll realize that he's been with you through every single step of the way and he's here to help you. But because he loves you and gives you free will, he lets you experience whatever choice you decide to choose. But if you just choose first off to say, hey, God, I need you right now Mm -hmm. and I want you to be with me Mm -hmm. and I'm asking for your guidance. If you ask, you shall find knock and the door shall be answered, you know, asking you will receive asking you will receive. That's what it is. Seek and you shall seek and you shall find. But again, he's here for us. So, yep. Look up. Look up. But thank you again, everyone, for listening to us chat. Fired up. This was Excited, this was great, baby. babe. It's always so fun to, to talk to with talk. you when we get into it, you when know. We get into it, yeah. It's like a different energy in the room. Uh, uh. So anyways, <laughs> thank you everybody for plugging in. Hey. We are very grateful. I mean, again, thank you for listening to us and yeah. taking time out of your day to choose to listen to us. We it's, got some big stuff coming. It's really just a dream that More this is all stuff. coming into fruition. So it is a dream. We love you. We are grateful. And I hope you all have a beautiful and blessed day today. Awesome. We love you guys.